Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a differential equation. A good one. We have y prime equals 4 divided by the quantity x minus y squared. And we're going to be solving for y values if possible. So to be able to solve this problem, first of all, you kind of need to take care of the quadratic. Because if you go ahead and expand it, let's say you expand this and multiply by y prime, you're going to get something super duper messy, don't you think? Multiply that by y prime and you get equals 4. And now how do you solve an equation like this, right? Is this a linear equation? That's another question to ask. But anyways, it's going to be hard if you expand it. Probably impossible. So let's go ahead and do it without. So we're going to use a really cool method called substitution. If you said that, you got it. So we're going to go ahead and replace x minus y with something. How about setting x minus y equal to u? That gives us x minus y equals u. Now notice that y is a function of x. I probably forgot to say that, but hopefully it's understood. And because of that, u is also a function of x, which means we can differentiate both sides. Now, why do we need to do that? Because in our equation, we're going to replace x minus y with u, but that gives us y prime equals 4 over u squared. Now, you don't really know how to associate y prime and u squared because they are different variables. So you need to find a way to kind of, you know, make them agree or to work together, uh, somehow make it easier for yourself. So here's what we're going to do at this point then. We're going to go ahead and differentiate everything, like both sides, right? The derivative of x with respect to x is just dx over dx. I know some people say, oh, this is not a fraction. Well, it is a fraction sort of, so you can call, call this one. But if you think about it, really think about it, the derivative of x with respect to x is 1. So this becomes 1 minus the deriv derivative of y is just y prime and the derivative of u is u prime. Now what would happen if you had something like y squared? Let's say this was our u and you were trying to differentiate, you will get 1 minus. Now to differentiate y squared, first you're going to treat it as like kind of like differentiated with respect to y first, like 2y. And then, of course, to fix or to correct it, to adjust it, you would need to multiply by the derivative of y with respect to x, which is y prime. Make sense? Okay. That's how it works with different types of, you know, functions that you may encounter. But in this case, we have a simpler one. So now let's go ahead and take this expression and see how we can use it in our equation. First of all, notice that in the original problem, we have y prime. So let's go ahead and isolate it. Switch these two around. You're going to get y prime equals 1 minus u prime. So now I can replace y prime with that in my original equation. And this one, of course, with u. So now we get 1 minus u prime is equal to 4 divided by u squared. So this basically takes us from the y world to the u world. Make sense? And of course, we can always... Uh, substitute, uh, back substitute, right? Or substitute back, whichever way you like it. So our goal is to make this a solvable equation. And obviously it makes sense if you isolate u prime. So go ahead and switch these again. u prime can be written as 1 minus 4 over u squared. Or you can write it as u squared minus 4 divided by u squared. Awesome. We made a common denominator. This is u prime. Now, this is a separable differential equation. How do I know that? Well, first of all, there's no x. That's a good thing. And u and x, if, even if there were x, uh, they would have to be mixed to make it non-separable. So we can write u prime as the u over dx. And notice that you can put u's on one side and x is on the other side. In this case, again, we don't have x, but we have dx. So now we can write this as u squared over u squared minus 4 du, in, in other words, like multiply by the reciprocal, and then this is going to equal dx. And of course, our goal is to solve for u in terms of x, so let's go ahead and integrate both sides. Once you separate the variables, your next step should be integrating both sides with respect to the variable, whatever the variables on, on that side, 
and then we're just gonna integrate normal, right? How do you integrate u squared over u squared minus four? Well, there's a couple different ways to go about it. One way to do it, let me just show you real quick, and then I will proceed with the other method. You can go ahead and take this expression and kind of subtract and add four to it so that you can kind of separate it into two fractions. And this part will become one, as you can see, and this trick is often used with rational expressions when you do partial fractions, so on and so forth, whatever the goal is. But with these kinds of expressions, with rational expressions, we do this all the time. Now, one is easy to integrate. What about the other part? The other part is also easy. This is where we use the partial fractions. So you can actually go ahead and write this first with the factors, u plus two and u minus two from difference of two squared. As you know, a squared minus b squared can be factored. You should definitely know that formula is one of the most important formulas, if not the most important one. And then this now can be broken down into a constant divided by u plus two plus another constant divided by u minus two. Once you make a common denominator, find the values of a and b, which are constants, you're gonna be able to integrate. Because if you think about it, like integrating something like this, if you integrate that, it's just gonna be a times ln absolute value of u minus two, I mean u plus two, right? Easy. So once you find the value of a, you'll have a nice integrand or result, whatever that's called. So that's one way to approach it. I'm not, I'm not gonna do it because that's a lot of work. Instead, I'm gonna use something real cool and that is called trigonometric substitution. Because of u squared minus four, we can replace u of it two times. Now you gotta be careful. If you have something like the variable squared minus a perfect square, that is secant. If you have something like the opposite, like four minus u squared, that's sine or cosine. I mean, sine is better because it's derivative is positive cosine. And then if you have something like u squared plus four, that is definitely a tangent. You see, that's how it works. So in this case, we're gonna replace u with two times secant theta. Not only that though, you also need to evaluate du, which is done by differentiating basically, and you gotta multiply by d theta. So du is just gonna be the derivative of two secant, which is two secant times tangent, because the derivative of secant is secant times tangent. Easy to remember, right? And then multiply by d theta. Now we're gonna go ahead and substitute all of this into our equation and hopefully that'll give us a better integral, right? Or integrand, whatever, that's such a weird word, right? So we can go ahead and now do this. Oops, I'm trying to erase, but the eraser always goes back. Now let's go ahead and plug it in. U squared, now you're gonna square this, that's gonna give you four secant squared theta. And then uh, in the denominator, you're gonna get four secant squared theta minus one times du, which is two secant theta tangent theta d theta. Of course, the whole thing needs to be integrated, but don't worry, this is gonna simplify like crazy. First of all, uh, remember that uh, you can factor out a four here. And when you do, you're gonna get secant squared theta minus four. Oops, that's supposed to be a one, Never mind and then times two secant theta tangent theta d theta. And then the next thing is gonna be, you're gonna go ahead and cancel out the fours. And of course, secant squared minus one. You should know that this is equal to tangent squared because tangent squared plus one is equal to secant squared, that's why. Now we can go ahead and simplify some of these things like tangent is gonna go into one of these and we're gonna end up with something like this. We're gonna get two secant cube theta d theta divided by tangent theta, and that's our integral. And it kind of looks complicated, right? But here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go ahead and split the secant. Maybe I should just do it right away. Uh, maybe not multiply them, but that's okay. So we can kind of write this as two times secant theta times secant squared theta d theta and then that'll be multiplied by tangent theta. So that's one way to approach it. Another way to approach it, I think, would be replacing secant with one over cosine. So we're gonna get two times one over cosine cubed theta d theta, and then in the denominator, we're gonna have sine over cosine. And of course, one of those will uh, flip and multiply. So it's gonna be like two times cosine theta over sine theta multiplied by, uh, one over cosine cubed theta, and then d theta, and this can be simplified. Uh, we can factor out 
one of these, uh, and that'll be a two actually, indeed. So we're gonna get something like two over sine theta, cosine theta, and then d theta. Awesome. And then of course you can multiply the numerator and the denominator by two for a good reason, because in the denominator we're gonna have the double angle, which is pretty easy to integrate because that's just one function, right? So now this can be written as sine of two theta. So we basically have four, we can pull the four out and one over sine is cosecant. So it's just gonna be cosecant two theta d theta. Now you may, may or may not know how to integrate cosecant of an angle, but if you memorize the formula, that should be fairly easy to do. I think it's something like negative ln cosecant two theta plus cotangent two theta, something like that. And then of course there's gonna be a four here and then you may need to adjust uh, because of the two theta, you're gonna have a one half coming from the integration. So it's gonna be negative two ln of this instead. Make sense? Of course, I'm not gonna add the constant because or maybe I will, who knows? <laughs> but I need to back substitute, right? Of course, this is gonna be like plus a constant C, but then how do you back substitute? What is theta and U, how are they related? Well, U is equal to two secant theta. So now we can go ahead and write the secant theta as U over two, and then draw a right triangle real quick. Of course, I hope I don't make this, I don't get it wrong this time. Secant is <laughs> one over cosine, so it's gonna be u over two. Did I get that right? Because two over u would be cosine, yes. And from Pythagorean theorem, this should be the square root of u squared minus four, which kind of explains the radical, or I mean the substitution. <laughs> okay, so now from here, we're gonna have to find this and that, but if you do it, you're gonna be able to get there, and I'm gonna leave it as an exercise for you, and don't hate me for leaving this problem incomplete because a lot of times people say, why don't you complete the process? No, that's for you to do because that's too much work and I'm lazy, but here's what's gonna happen. Once you find the answer in terms of u, you need to replace u with x minus y, and then it'll basically give you the solution, okay? Oh, by the way, I forgot to say, this is not equal to a constant because it's equal to dx. So yes, this is gonna equal not plus c, but this should instead equal x plus c. I wanna leave the constant on the right-hand side. So once you do the integration, you're gonna be able to get the answer, uh, well, you already got the answer in terms of theta. But once you replace uh, cosine and cosecant and cotangent in terms of u, and then do the substitution u equals x minus y, you're gonna get the solution in terms of x and y. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.